Hello subscribers and people I don't care about. Um, <laughs> you can hit the subscribe button. It's a big red button, it's got the word subscribe on it, and then I'll care. Um, I have been inspired. Um, it's been brought about by the Dwarven Forge Kickstarter. Now, if you're, if you're watching this in the future, and this is a repeat on YouTube, then um, the Kickstarter in question is the City Builder one. Uh, Dwarven Forge come up with this, this modular building system. And to be honest, they don't look that pretty. Not when you compare it to miniatures like Tabletop World. They do this, oh, beautiful buildings. I don't have any. I <laughs> wish I did. Um, they, they are to die for. But the Dwarven Forge ones aren't as good as that, but they're modular. Uh, and they include city streets and sewers and roofs and... Um, they, you know, they stack and everything else, and, and it's, a, it's a good system. Uh, I, I, the, the cities on the, the pictures look pretty good. Um, just, I, I wouldn't put them as the best in the market, um, simply because Tabletop World exists, and Dwarven Forge just isn't that good. But, um, they're modular. Now, I, I really like this, I was quite inspired by this, but one of the, the problems um, I have with Dwarven Forge, well actually, it's really the problem I have with Dwarven Forge, I would have backed that Kickstarter in a heartbeat if it wasn't for the fact that they charge British people double before shipping on their web shop. Um, it's, it's actually about 180% price increase before they do the shipping. Uh, it just goes up, you know, you, you're not allowed to buy from the US shop, you get directed to the UK shop and price doubles. And I'm not talking about some mistaken currency conversion. It's genuinely, you know, if you, if you allow for the currencies and, and do all the conversions between them, the UK price is up here. It's frankly unacceptable. I wrote to them about it uh, to see what they had to say. Uh, and he answered initially with regards to the Kickstarter, which I'd already decided not to back. Um, and he said, well, it's because we might pay export tax, although we don't guarantee it. So I had a look at the Kickstarter, the pledge manager thing that they've got, or pledge calculator. Um, and sure enough, um, they've done it with, with the Kickstarter, they did it with the shipping. So when you select UK, um, the, the, the price of a small pledge doubled. Uh, the price of a larger pledge was up about 40%-ish, um, if you went to the really big pledges where you're spending a thousand pounds or so. Um, they obviously felt they didn't need to rip British people off that much if they're already spending a lot of money. Um, I just, I thought that was shocking, but I, I, I replied, I said, no, I'm actually asking about your web shop. Why, why do British people going to your website have to pay double before shipping? And they said, well, we, we distribute from a, a UK distributor and, and he's his own business and we leave the pricing up to him, so, because he's got to make a living. I said, no, that's, that's not right. Um, that's, why, why do I have to pay double for the same thing? Uh, just because I'm British. That's actually, it has a name, that practice in business. It's called prejudicial pricing. Um, and I, I don't think that's too strong a word. I think it's exactly the right word. It's prejudicial pricing. I don't think Dwarven Forge have got over the War of Independence yet. So these things are floor tiles from Dwarven Forge. You get, I think it's 36 in a set, and a set is £110, painted or unpainted, which I usually go for. Um, it varies on the set, but you, you're probably talking, uh, I think it's about £65 or something. Um, so they're, they're a couple of quid each. Um, or, you can do what I've done, which is where I've put six of them together, made a mould and cast it, and that costs about 50p. Uh, and that's buying resin in small quantities. Uh, if you were to buy in a bigger quantity like Dwarven Forge do, I mean, that costs pence. But, um, yeah, that, 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 that's about 50p's worth of resin. Um, <laughs> much cheaper. So making moulds, something like that, do a cavity pour, it's actually really simple. So I'm going to do a video where I show you how to do a cavity pour mould. I'm going to do a video where I show you how to, ca uh, to cast the mould into resin. Uh, which is really easy. That that step is so easy. Um, <laughs> the bit that worries me is that's clay, and I've never done this before, but I'm going to try and sculpt some stuff. So I'm going to start with the road. I'm going to make my own medieval city or town. 
probably be a city because it's cheap to reproduce once you've done it right. So I, I'm going to make a, a I'm going to fill this table up. Um, and uh, so I'm going to start with a road because that struck me as fairly simple to make uh, to sculpt because I've never sculpted. Uh, so I think that'll be the hardest step and it might go disastrously wrong. So step one, sculpt. Step two, make mould. Step three, cast it. Step four, paint. That's the goal. Um, so I've got here a block of air drying clay, cost four pound, um, which in dollars is nothing. Um, so I'm uh, gonna, yeah, gonna <laughs> try sculpting. I know I've never done it before. Um, so this step, non-toxic sculpting. It's non-toxic stuff. Perfectly fine. It's air dry. Takes four or five days. Yeah, four or five days. Um, Making the silicone mould, again, it's totally inert substance, completely safe. Your dog might chew it, but well, I'll give you tips and stuff when we get to that section. Resin section. Resin, technically, it's hard, it sets hard, so, um, yeah, you don't want to get that in your eyes. Uh, but So, some safety precautions, safety glasses or, I don't know, glasses, just in case it splashes in your eye. You don't want it in your eye. We'll talk more about that later. Um, and some gloves so that you don't rub it in your eye. Um, and, uh, and painting, well, I presume you know how to paint. Again, don't drink paint, that would be daft. Um, so, yeah, let's do it. So, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna try and sculpt this onto a, uh, a template I'm gonna make on paper. Now, that might be something that's really stupid to do. Uh, I don't know, because I've never done this before. Um, so I'm just going to draw a square in the middle of this paper. Um, uh, yeah, so I am going to do it in the middle because I'm thinking the excess then I can just trim off around the edge when I... and, and also trim the clay off at the same time. I, that, that's my thinking. I don't know if it's sensible. Normally you'd do something like this, you know, when you're cutting up paper, you'd start in the corner, but... Um, anyway... About square. There we go, one big noughts and crosses going. So, is that square? Is that four inches? Four? No. Oh, smeg. Oh, I've done that wrong. Four. Oh, no, that's more or less there. This line up to yes, I did that line wrong. I'm gonna map it. Okay. There we go. So this is my template. Um. Okay. And then I'm, I'm gonna do it as a road, and I want a raised pavement down each side. Uh, so I want that pavement to be an inch thick. The idea is the road will be two inches, actually be slightly less than two inches because the curb and stuff, so... Um, so this will be the, the pavement area. I have no idea if what I'm doing is even remotely correct. <laughs> no idea at all. Um, so then the bricks will come out from the pavement a bit. The, the sort of edge break somewhere along there, I guess. Um, just a rough, rough guideline. Okay, so that's, that's the sort of thing it's going to be. Uh, right, this is air drying. Uh, I don't really have a way to seal it, so I guess I'll get some cling film out to protect the stuff I don't use, because yeah, it's quite a lot. I mean, it's only four quid for this, but... At the end of the day, I'm gonna waste the world's natural resources, so um okay. Let me get some cling film. Okay, so this blanket is protecting my table, I have quite a nice table then, so I want this as a flat surface, but I don't want to ruin that, so I've got some menu here. Um, if that makes you hungry, I'm sorry. Um okay. 
So, I have no idea. I should probably do some research into clay modelling first. Um, right. I have no sculpting tools or anything like that. Um, this is all new to me. Right, what do we do? I suppose break off a chunk. Oh yeah, this is going to make my hands mucky. So I'm going to break a chunk off. I need a rolling pin. I don't have one. Do I? Do I have a rolling pin? I don't know. Um, rolling pin. I found a rolling pin. My brother drinks this stuff. I'm not a fan personally. Okay. Right. Actually I'll pour it out. I went the other way. I filled it up so it's heavier. Because I thought if it was over tea it would probably um just you know buckle. So well, I'm try and just gonna try and stretch it out as much as possible. I won't be able to see my template, so I don't know why I bothered. But anyway, oh, I don't know. There we go. Right, didn't quite get to that corner, that's okay. Right, I now want to raise area, uh, lowered area, so it needs to be thicker. I feel like we're making progress.
don't want to roll into the middle this time. Okay, how's that? Needs more. Okay, kind of getting that. That should be enough to start with. So, I'm going to kind of mark down here. And I'm going to lift this away. Can I do that? Yeah, come on. Come on. That's it. Give me a nice curb. It's quite... Gooey. It's a little bit like plasticine. Okay, and my tile edges along here. Now that does not look like an inch wide. What's gone on there? That is not an inch wide. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, go back on. <laughs> okay. Go back, go back, go back. Okay, I originally had in my mind that it would be brick road, but there's a possibility it's going to end up as a mud road. <laughs> to do these long straights. There we go, I've got something that marks it now. This isn't so bad. Kind of getting there. seem to be pulling the paper away a bit when I lift it off the paper. So, now, I'd like to get that really flat so that it, I can sculpt the surface. Everything I do seems to tear it. Obviously, not slicing my fingers there, being very careful of that actually. Right. at dawn. Oh, right. Okay. I'm just going to make a brick square pattern. This going to be brick. It's going to be like a tile pattern. I'm going to do some odd sizes.
don't want to keep it too uniform. I want it to feel like it's an old road, but together with different sort of slates and stuff. And I'll, I'll somehow curb this edge later. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. Okay. need to remove bits sometimes and quite I'm not using the right tool for that I guess. Seems to me, when you score the surface, you, you create some burring, and then you can just pad it down, and you're still left with the line you made. That's more or less how I'm doing it. Da -da -da. Okay, let's go a bit quicker. the other way to do this would be to actually make little bricks and then put it all together. That strikes me as a lot of work. I can just quickly score a surface like this. It's recording, right? Yeah, okay. on camera. There she is. Hello cutie pie. So I don't know if you can particularly see how well uh, I don't know how it's going to come out, but I do film in 1080p, so if your YouTube isn't showing in high quality, uh, hit the little gear icon in the corner and raise the quality, and hopefully you'll be able to see some detail. Uh, with a bit of luck. <laughs> um, I actually film at 1080p, 50 frames a second, but I've still not figured out how to get my editing software to support 50 frames a second, so I have to convert it to 25 before I upload. Um, not that I think the quality of the camera is so good that 50 frames a second really matters. It's not like I'm using expensive camera like on The Hobbit. It's just a pretty good camcorder, that's all. Um, triple light sensor and stuff for low light sensors. And the reason I'm talking about the camera is because I know so little about sculpting. I don't know if I can actually contribute anything useful. Um, but so far, I think this is turning out okay. I think it might, I might struggle to do a building face here though. But I think the roads shouldn't be too bad, I hope.
is not as hard as I thought it would be, but I guess I am doing a very simple shape. I tried to get green stuff, because that's the thing I'm told is is the thing that the, the modelling guys tend to use. They use green stuff, and if failing that, milliput is sort of okay. Um, but I could not get it at my local shop. So that's why I ended up with clay. Oh, kitty, you do want out again? Have to wait. Yeah. Oh, blimey, that's me being told off. I gave you treats. I'm gonna give you wet food. Give me treats. Okay, that's my road cobbly things or tiles. Now I want this to feel more like bricks. So I want it to feel pretty deep. Okay, it's getting a bit harder to do that. Maybe I should have actually made bricks. Easy, just alternating things and you know, alternating where the, the, the bricks are lined up on each row. I'm not sure anyone watching this is smart enough to already know about bricks. And then I should have probably done that as an inch marker though. I don't know how many have you got. Yeah, it kind of is. Kind of. Yeah, sort of. They're not great, to be honest. I struggled a bit more with those. Okay. Yeah, maybe that'd be a bit neater. The thing is, because I'm going so deep, I need to get the play out and I think I'm, I'm just not, there's, there's, I imagine the tool you want will be like a V shape so that you scoop it, but whereas a stick just kind of pokes, oh I made a gap where I didn't want one, oh hmm, the pear's not so easy at this stage. much. Oh, come out. It's that little flick at the end to get the excess out. I need to go from the outside toward the middle, perhaps. Okay. You know what? Why don't I do this? Because then, three and a half, two and a half, become inch markers. Okay, I should have done these as bricks. Lesson learned. Too late now, that's the style. Unless I chop it off and 
You know what? I'm tempted. Because they, these don't look very good. Let's zoom in, as you can see. There we go. So I'm, I'm umming and ahhing over the quality of these bricks on the side. I don't think they're great. Let's go for it. the curb being kind of having bricks over the edge and I haven't done that so that's a bit of a regret because I think it would have looked good still now lots of wagons will come along a road like this and I think they will have made a few tiles slant so we can do a couple of slanted tiles somehow if I have the skill to make a tiny rectangle, I don't know if I do. Um, come on. Flatten it at one end, uh, it's really thin, and then, no, oh, that didn't help, okay. Come on, there we go, nice and rectangular. feels like it's out of place and then I kind of want to go down really deep here so it looks like that's where it should have been and it's just not there anymore into some of these the back of this knife I mean the clay seems to have a, a few kind of cracks and I don't know it's not yeah there's a few here and there um, not sure if my cracks will show up from the um, the edge of the tiles to be honest I'm trying to do them a lot shallower so that they do look like a cracked tile and I'm trying to keep them roughly where cut wheels would go seems the logical place Um, I like that. I think that looks really good. So I'm going to do another one. And I have two displaced tiles, or maybe three. Otherwise, you'll see the one that it will stand out. So having multiple will hopefully make it less obvious. 
Um, so I've done a small one, nice and thin, cut it into a rectangle. Oh, there we go, sort of. Nice little rectangle. Uh, find a place for it to go, just there. Okay. So, and then I'm going to just sort of more or less cut away where that tile should have been or push the clay up to it so it looks like the tile should be there. Well, that's come out a lot better than I thought it would. I'm going to do one more. One more dislodged tile. Da, da, da. Maybe the right thing to do actually is to remove the tile from here first so that then I don't have to cut around the tile I've placed down. That would be more sensible, wouldn't it? So there's the missing tile. where it's ended up. Slightly different shape, so let's change the shape. Oh, cut too deep. A little jump in the video was my um, camcorder running out of battery. So I'm still just trying to get this third lost tile and I'm trying to remove the clay before I place the tile and I took too much out so I'm having to pack a bit more in there. Um, that's not good. kind of gone a little bit wrong this one. I thought it'd be so much easier to take the clay away first. And it probably would be, I, I just made an error. Put some into that corner. Ah, that bit's dry. Go away. There we go. Oh, what's that? Let's get that out of the way. Okay. Hmm. I think we need to do that in a lot more place. To be honest, I think the fact that I scored the tiles rather than made them and placed them really shows up. So I'm going to do a lot more made tiles over the top, I think. Um, even if I don't make them all misaligned like these three I've just done. Just let me get one chopped into place and we'll see how it looks and then...
certainly a different quality to when you do it like that. So I'm going uh, to replace a, a fair number of tiles with um, these these sort of made tiles that are just sort of padded down, but not quite all the way. See what I'm working on. No, I don't. Where is it? It's yes, you can. Okay. Um, there we go. I'm just going to pad that in. It just feels a bit different. It's got a bit of a, a bit, a bit more life to it. A bit more height. That depth just adds a little something. Amazing, it almost looks like a road repair. <laughs> okay, that's looking pretty good. What do we do about these bricks? Should we do more with these bricks? Looks like that's slanting down a bit. It probably is. I think that's raised a bit in the middle. I don't know how good these will be when they go end to end. And there we go, one standard road piece. Um, now, if we can do something with this in the meantime, because I don't want to put it back in, it's got some of this paper stuck to it, so I'm going to try and. Ooh, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to have a cup of coffee. So here we are, extreme close-up of my road with those tiles that I've placed on top. Um, and just with a bit of leftover, I made this wooden beam, which I intend to use on my houses. So that will sit there and sort of be a, a side beam. Um, obviously more to come on, on terms of the house fascia, but um, there we go. One road piece. Uh, so if it if it all works then I'll do a corner and a T junction and I will have a road. <laughs>